Okay. So this is day one of the Jebbafal Lake Ritual, uh, that, whose name is Drasea. And I have made, this is the third time I've uh, done this today, which is to say I have, I have made the call to the Aether of Tex. And so as before, what I'm seeing is some more of the symbols. I'm seeing a square pyramid, and I'm seeing just some swirling. I'm being reminded of my having done this before in Jebbafall, in which the symbolism of a spiral coming about from a, uh, a, a, about the square pyramid from the top, from its apex, and coming down all around the globe upon which the pyramid sat. And I'm being told once again that this is a representative of the quintessence. And I'm being told to look very carefully at this spiral about the earth so there is once again an emphasis on mathematics. So the sphere is not just the sphere, but it's also the earth itself, the angels are telling me. And I'm seeing this spiral, and it's like it's lighting up at certain points. And they're telling me that there is a ratio that can be followed to use this particular spiral around the earth in order to find the different parts of the earth that are uh, being activated. In other words, if you were to go X number of times with this ratio about the spiral, you would land on the next part of the earth. So some kind of formula there. And this is of interest. Um, so now I'm seeing the four corners of the square pyramid come up and it's like, whereas in the noon, um, scrying, the top of the pyramid folded out. Now it's like the four square, the four points of the square are coming up and trying to fold in. So each of those four triangles is from the bottom coming up and wrapping upwards and thereby creating an inverted uh, square pyramid. And they're telling me this is symbolic of the uh, four dimensional version of this. So just to understand that when this unfolds and then refolds that they're speaking now to this higher dimension. And it's like I'm seeing a spinning and the, like there's this casting off from each of the four corners of this square pyramid. So what they're telling me is that this is this is what it's like when, so I'm confused because it, on the one hand, it seems as if, you know, there's this question of how do elements emerge from the quintessence and that's what this is. But when it's in its more natural state, it seems as though this is humanity trying to take what it has and Re, it's, it's like you're trying to get the lock, the key just right in the lock to, tr to try to open it up. And what the, the lock is in this case is this, day, this, this difficult chaos that we live in from day to day. And what the key is, is some, creating some kind of structure, whether or not it's this pyramid. The pyramid is given because it is half of the geometric platonic solid, this ideal form so that if we can create it here in this three-dimensional reality, then we can somehow unlock these higher mysteries, these higher dimensions, and these higher states of consciousness. And thereby, um, from that place of elevated consciousness, rectify the earth. And so this is, again, a very broad one. Again, 
uh, during the first Jebafal run, a lot of this symbology came much later. So what I would note is that first scrying through the Aethers, that was like one level. Then the next time I did this, in addition to um, getting a lot of the later Aethers, seeing them very early, I was also getting, it with each time I would scry the Aether symbology and symbols and specific um, fusion of ideas. And now this time, what I'm noticing is that a lot of the, the symbols that came very later, they're coming back, but in a very intense way early on in the Aethers. And the first time I scried using these two books, um, what I noticed was that uh, all 30 Aethers came forward and then the symbology started almost immediately and the geometry started earlier when a lot of the symb symbolism doesn't begin until, um, I mean, you might get some early on in text, but nothing, nothing this intense, nothing this immediately wrapped up in geometry like this. So I'm asking what, um, what is important to know right now? And if there's any sort of additional rectification that can be done to me, through me, upon me, you know, what have you in my immediate, immediate environment. And the four governors of these five parts of the earth that are within the Aether are saying no, because they've already done a lot of work in the previous two times that I've called them. But the angels of Mars are coming in about me, having already called them earlier to earlier today. They're just sort of already here, and they're telling me to not do a formal call. They're already here, as is the Arbitel spirit uh, Faleg, and what they're doing is they're bid me, bidding me be very still and sort of make like um, if you were to do a very strong asana and just keep yourself very still at all costs. So I'm doing that, but not at the expense of talking. And they're like, just hold it, hold it, hold it. And it's like, I can see it, feel this big shooting down through, from my crown chakra, just kind of down more or less through the back of my head. And it's coming down and it's like, um, it's like this energy is shooting all the way down my central nervous system. And in so doing, it is, you know, whereas my will may tend to go in other directions when it's unfocused, now they're like focusing it very strongly and very sharply. And there's, they're telling me even at the midst of this Mars-Neptune conjunction that's coming up to not worry that that it will not fail, okay? And they're, they're saying like the chemistry is very good, just sort of a wink and a nod to uh, the chemistry, that Neptune as a planet of chemistry, as well as um, additional stuff that I'm not too worried about, um, it having any other intense meaning, which it doesn't. Uh, but I could be wrong, who knows? So, so now I'm seeing like this, this light open up uh, right in front of my third eye. And it's like, this is like the, the golden sphere of the divine that I first got when I created this zodiacal table. And it's like, this is, it's like I'm being dropped a delivery you know, kind of a round, somewhat elliptical uh, thing, almost like an egg. But it's being given, it's, it's more like the, the, if you were to take a cutting from a rose, and it would, it's more like a rose bud like that, um, a rose hip, and it's sort of opening up. And it's like, the message here is that you know, what you have is both weighty, because the, the initial sense that I got was that this was metallic of some sort, but that, that what I'm doing is both weighty, uh, but also um, the results will be beautiful. So there's a heaviness to it, but a, that it will open up. 
So I'm just noting for the record that there's a Saturnian alignment in my chart that's going on right now. And um, they're saying to just, it's okay to just be with that, you know, and to allow the pressure that you're under to continue and to um, not, not waver and not get caught up in things. Basically, the idea is keep your eye on the ball. And, but again, this golden light uh, I'm being referred back to as sort of like, it's sort of like this nice mix because it's sort of like if you can imagine sunlight, that's still very bright, but like moonlight, you can actually look directly at it. So again, the symbolism of the moon on the one hand and the sun with the other when it comes to the two books that uh, I have uh, created at the Angel's Instructions. And I'm sensing this light just coming, settling right in my heart chakra. And I'm being told that there will be a big unfolding of myself. And once again, every time I sort of engage in this intense Enochian, that is something that is um, just part of the deal. Okay. And I'm asking the governors if there's anything else or the angels of Mars, if there's anything else. And the answer appears to be no. So thus ends the first day of Drasaya.